You're listening to the talk of Delmarva. My friends, summer reading at the beach, a bowl, or even your front porch is a favorite summer activity. There's really nothing like uh, sitting with a good book in the summer and relaxing, of course, with an adult beverage, perhaps. But this year, I recommend a novel, Distorted Perception. And we are pleased to be joined here at First Day Chevrolet by its author, Jonathan R. Snowling, novelist, screenwriter, and political consultant. He's the author of Distorted uh, Perception. Let me welcome Jonathan to the program. Jonathan, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Jake, for uh, bringing me on uh, the show this morning. Uh, the this the, the book is fascinating. Now, I haven't gotten through the whole thing because, unfortunately, I didn't have a lot of time to read it. But I got through enough of it. And a couple of things uh, that I wanted to, uh, to point out. Uh, you've been a, um, a political consultant yes. uh, to a number of campaigns, not only here in the United States, but other parts of the world as well. And uh, it, it just appears to me that you saw a lot of things <laughs> and you heard a lot of things in your career in politics uh, that really it makes for it makes for good writing. Yeah, and it did. And you brought that your experiences. Now, not all of what you politics is what you see. There's yes. some things that you don't see in politics. Some things that happen behind the scenes. Um, but you brought some of the darker sides of what's going goes on not only in politics here in the United States but uh, across the world. Because let's face it, economics uh, is global now, but so is politics, isn't it? Absolutely, Jake. Um, but one of the key things in the book, it's, it's in one of the main th themes, and, and we cover corruption, and it's, it's a thriller, so you're going to get spies, you're going to get murders, you're going to get crooks and other politicians, the whole nine yards. But the, the driving thing underneath the, the overall story, it's about shaking off the lies and propaganda that we're constantly kind of swimming through day in day, and particularly right now in 2002. It's, it's a time where you're, you have restricted speech, you have um, just a, a lot of doublespeak, and, and, and your our politics are, right. are constrained by uh, what we can say, what we uh, can't say. We get a lot of lies in government. <laughs> we hear a lot of lies. There's not a lot of truth in government. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, uh, distorted perception really gives uh, the reader. The background on uh, why lies are told and how frequently they're told. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, in it's, elections, got a, right? a, it's very much a campaign story, and it's a, it, it it follows a uh, a campaign manager who who gets a, an assignment overseas to go out and, and run a presidential campaign, and things kind of go haywire, and uh, there's a an assassination attempt, and midway through, I don't know if I want to give give away too much. No, don't but give too much. Uh, yeah. It, it, it gets really wild after that, and it, it really gets, it's like a roller coaster to just free fall for the, the second half of the book. You're just moving as fast as you oh possibly my gosh. can. And, and, and the, the beginning moves pretty quick, too. People tell me they're, they're halfway through, like, this is really interesting, this is great. And then they get to the second half, and like, oh my God. Well, it reminds me, uh, the way you've, you've written the book with these fast-moving chapters, and it's good because if you get thirsty, you go <laughs> get a beer after the, you're not in between chapters. But uh, it's real, it, it, you don't, kind of lose track of where you are in the story because you have different plot lines going on. Yeah, there's not a lot of wor words wasted. Right. Honestly, I think I may have gone through each sentence in that probably rewritten and wrote each one 50 times. Right. And it sounds like a lot, but you, you rewrite the entire book multiple times over and over and over and over again. So it's just a matter of, of the story. You know, the story was a lot longer, a lot longer book originally, and it's just kind of whittling it down, whittling it down, making it quicker, making sure I'm using every, uh, every word efficiently as possible to kind of make it go. You're, you're getting the story without a lot of waste, and, uh, and uh, you're getting the, the excitement quicker and quicker and quicker, and so it, it's a good one. Now, you grew up in Maryland? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you brought local locations to the book, so yes. such as Fenwick Island, Prince George's County. You, you brought the... Yeah, uh, I was yeah. managing a presidential campaign in Panama right. uh, for, for two years, and it was the, absolutely the most, uh, most uh, grueling campaign, just a wild campaign I, I've ever, ever you're been. You're undefeated as a campaign manager. When you're in the campaign world, what, you're, what really counts is not necessarily you – can, you can have like a, you know, every single two years if you're an incumbent – that never loses. You don't actually have any opponents, and like most incumbents don't really get real opponents. Mm -hmm. And so that's not a race. That's not a win. So what campaign people judge each other by is is whether or not you win an open seat race, which which is where all the money comes in, where everyone's actually there's a real contest. And so of those, it's five and up. Now the the sort of perception uh, that we'll 
it's stated as a political thriller novel in the vein of Tom Clancy and George Orwell. I can't tell you how many callers to my show in this day and age we live in are making references to George Orwell and the works of George Orwell. And based on what I've read, you you have really captured uh, the, the, the kind of mystery that surrounds uh, what government does behind the backs of the citizens and why um, you really have to consider everything you're told uh, as having some basis in untruth. What are you, what's your response to that? Well, that's, the movie... It, it, or I'm sorry, the, the, the book, book. Which at some uh, point is going to be a movie, right? I, I certainly hope so. Yeah. But the... Uh, or a the, miniseries. Yeah, the, the closest it would say would be a, a, sort of like a Tom Clancy, but a, a um, clear and present danger with Harrison Ford and, and mm-hmm. maybe if uh, George Orwell and, and he had a baby. And, and granted, <laughs> this is 2022 right. and, and Joe Biden's president, so the, I guess men, men can get pregnant now. But the... Uh, <laughs> uh. But uh, the ni- 1984, it is... Uh, there's a certain scene in that in, in that in that book where they're they're torturing uh, the the main character, right? And over and over and over again, to keep asking him the question, you know, what does two plus two equal? And he keeps saying four. It's four. And then they just <laughs> torture him over right. and torture him again. And they say no, you know, it's five. And they, and they keep arguing back and forth, but right. it's four. And that's really, I think, a, a bit of a metaphor of what we're going through right now, where we have so many things that everyone knows is blatantly not true but we're force fed right to have to accept it as truth and and that's sort of uh it's just a trick that that's a old as a uh, old as time and, and part of this book is kind of helps people to work through that and, and shake that stuff off and kind of help take a journey to find truth but looking inward and not necessarily outward at, at uh, this politician is going to save me, or this uh, right. political party is going to have all the answers, and and you know the book is not actually partisan. It is uh, it's very much uh, it's realistic that, as far as and, and this exactly. is why I say politics. But, this is my saying: politics is power, and those who gain power over us do not easily relinquish it. And uh, American politics, politics and elections are no longer strictly American elections because now politics, like everything else, is global. I guess there's forces other than just the, the candidates that, that are that are involved. Correct. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's that's one of the problems that 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 democracies anywhere are facing, and particularly America and the American story. And we're a couple hundred years old, but yep. we're still fairly fairly new. And we're trying to make this thing work the best we can. And, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But it's up to us to kind of make sure that uh, that we continue this thing forward and pass it on to the next generation that they have a democracy. That it is uh, one that that's real. That the elections are real. That the uh, that we have a free press, which I, I don't I don't see that the press is particularly free at the moment in the United States. <laughs> no, I would. That's a problem. Yeah, that 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 is a problem. Uh, what are, what are your thoughts about the character that you created, Rex Nash? How much of Rex is, comes from your experiences in Panama and other places where you were? Well, uh, it's it's a fictional character, and the, and the stories, you know, it's everything in there is is, is fictional. Right. But the, um, but like all writers, you're influenced by by your experiences, and there's sort of a, mm-hmm. a, an adage in writing is is you're supposed to write what you know, and that's right. what I did. And so I, I know campaigns, I know these places, and it, and again, that's that's why Ocean City and and the Delmarva, and uh, and Fenwick really came into it because when I came back from Panama. After this uh, just crazy race, I, I stayed. I stayed here. I mean, I grew up in the area. Went to the beaches, and I, right. I, my family has a place down here. But I got my own place over the over the summer, right after that race. And, and as I was writing the book, I was really writing. I was here, and uh, and, and it was really influenced and thinking about old girlfriends from the past that that you know experiences that I've had here. And so there, you know, a, there is a romantic thread in, in that, and that probably comes from. What I was thinking about. Uh, at the so time there was a the Jessica beach. in your past, huh? Well, there's Jessica. <laughs> yeah, no, you know I, what I mean, it's, I understand. But it's not a real person. But it's, no, no, I understand. I, I understand. It's influenced, you know, by many. I understand. Our guest is Jonathan Snowling. Jonathan has written an outstanding book, multiple plot lines, distorted perception. Before we go to break, I just want to ask you a question: Is Armando Delgado George Soros? He uh, was a lot like George Soros. You know, it, again, that's a you're influenced. 
by uh, yeah, I understand. By, me, by many people, <laughs> I do. And I so understand. I, I don't want to say it's entirely. But as him, soon but, as I'm reading this he, character, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's George Soros if I've ever read him. There's you know? certainly shades of uh, Mr. Soros. Uh, but, I understand. There's there's a couple others that that I had in mind, but it's it's you know a combination of, of a few of those guys, and certainly he would be uh, an influence on on, but not wholly. The book is Distorted Perception. We'll be back to talk more with its author, Jonathan R. Snowling. Uh, perfect summer reading, my friends. You're going to the beach. You want a great book to get into. You will not be disappointed. Distorted Perception, Jonathan R. Snowling. More with Jonathan on the talk of Delmarva in just a moment.